Hello there doctor, today I want to talk about an operator that is one of, if not the most important operator in Rose Island. She is one of the most free to play characters in the game as you gain her immediately at the beginning of the game and also have two forms that you can use under your liking. With that, I introduce you to our protagonist, Amia. Funnily enough, even after 3 years of Rhodes Island operating, Amia has very little amount of guys available. The reason I'm making this video is to make this video more of a long term as Amia is the most accessible caster in the game and I still see a few people asking if Amia is worth it. In this video, I will be fully covering on Amia as a caster, then I will make a second part where I'll be fully covering her as a guard. We will be covering Amia's talents, her skills along the best team compositions, things to consider before building her, and finally, my overall opinion about Amia. Another thing to note is that we will be covering Amia's skill on 3.8 challenge mode for damage comparison with skill level 7 to mastery 3, and also for the demos, where Skull Shatterer has high HP, and since most of Amia's damage are pure or true damage anyway, this may Skull Shatterer the best candidate for this video as their HP is as equal as most endgame bosses. I will eventually show her on high end stages as well. Be aware that this is going to be a long appointment, so I have the time stamps ready if you want to skip through the parts you want to see the most. With that out of the way, let's get started. Amia is a core caster that specializes in rapid arch damage and also her most well known role, boss killing. With the amount of 5 star operators available within the game, Amia is one of the only characters that fully specializes as boss killer without needing assistance. The best part of all, everyone has Amia, which means the game already gives everyone a boss killer at the beginning of the game, although you just need to invest on her. Another would be Province, the Chan God, Tequila, and even cheaper option, Cutter. But even then, these operators except Province need some assistance to deal noticeable damage to bulky bosses. Aside of that, Amia is the only character that can change her class before operation, which changed herself into Arch Scott class that specializes in tanking Arch damage, global support, consistent source of melee Arch damage, and finally, boss killing. But we will cover that side of Amia in later videos. Amia's boss killing skill deal rare pure or true damage to enemies, making her easily one of the most accessible operator in the game when it comes to budget boss killer, especially in late game where bosses have very high defense and arts resistance. It is inevitable that there are better options when it comes to boss killing such as Chen the Howling Day, Surder, and lately there are new operators for Disney such as Buzemka and Ebenholz, although he is not that amazing without support and purely one of the one-shot memes. Swartz is also included, but Pozemka is usually a better option, especially if she attacks faster and has her summon type rider to help damage bosses and reduce their defense. However, Swartz can be better than Pozemka on very extreme situations, being she is better when enemies have extremely high defense. There's a very good video that addresses this and is linked in the pinned comment. Okay, back to Amia. Of course, that doesn't hamper Amia for being a competitive operator for this role either because being a boss killer, she is still a very viable option and her mastery is, especially her third skill, half great gains. Even though she is not the best at the role, she is definitely one of, if not the best boss killer within her rarity. Let's start off with Amia's talent. Amia has two talents with the first one being named as question marks. Amia's first talent unlocks when you promote her to elite 1 but this talent doesn't really give Amia anything in return so this talent is completely useless. No hidden mechanics or anything, it's completely useless at the score. At lead 2 however, this talent is changed to emotional absorption where she will recover at maximal of 3 skill points to herself when she hits an enemy and will recover at maximal of 10 skill points when she defeats an enemy. This allows Amia to significantly lower her skill buildup as all of her caster skills are very expensive skill points from the beginning except her first skill. Now let's talk about her module. Amia's caster module increases her maximum HP and her maximum attack, which is a decent boost for her survivability while charging her skills and also her offensive capabilities. As for the effect, this module allows Amia to gain 1 skill point when she hits an elite or boss enemies. Further upgrades give her even more skill points when she hits or kills an enemy, up to 4 skill points and 12 skill points on their respective triggers. 
Personally, I find the Merlot upgrades to be an overkill because she will hit enemies multiple times anyway, and you do typically use melee operators for lane holding anyway, so the skill point gain is very consistent. But that's just my opinion because at the end of the day, it is always welcome to upgrade her module if you want faster skill points recovery or if you want the stat boost upgrade. Since the module upgrades give her one additional skill point, assuming she doesn't kill anyone but hits a list or bosses which is 5 skill points per hit, this means she needed to hit at around 16 times or less for her second skill to active and around 20 hits or less for her third skill to active, which is a significant upgrade before her module upgrades as before that can be around 22 to 23 hits for her second skill to active and around 28 hits for her third skill to active. I also have to note that Amiya will eventually kill 1 or 2 enemies at few times so the number can significantly significantly be reduced once that is triggered. Gaining more skill points from the module doesn't really help her arch damage to bulky enemies with medium resistance that much, but it does give better quality of life improvement. Besides, this is still a decent boost for Amiya as this can improve her skill cycling and give her more comfort to recharge her third skill faster. Overall, this module is okay. By the time I'm making this video, her module is not releasing global server yet. The skill by itself is very straightforward, and simply if you're a newbie, this skill is a good skill to start. Early game enemies don't have very high egg resistance anyway, so having Ami on your team in case you don't have better options yet is still a decent choice. However, this skill falls out once she progresses throughout the late game, and while the mastery upgrades are very noticeable, I don't personally recommend you to upgrade this skill above skill level 7 since you have plenty of better options to work with. It is not a terrible skill, but for mastery value and what it can deliver, there's not much reason why you should use her if Haze, who is a cheaper alternative of the archetype, has similar if not better DPS than Amiya and also give her system shred for support contribution. In this following clip, you see the difference in terms of damage with skill level 7, mastery 3, and haste with mastery 3. As you can see, the difference is very significant. Starting from Haze, she defeats Skull Shatter at 40 mark while Mastery 3 Amiya at 48 mark. While the showcase is not a definitive answer that Haze is better than Amiya, it can be concluded that Haze has similar DPS to Amiya's first skill despite being lower rarity. Amiya does have better uptime thanks to her talent which makes her much easier to use and somewhat more superior. But the reason why Haze is able to beat Amiya is because she has Persistent Shred and her skill increases her attack as well, allowing her to hit harder despite having slower skill uptime. It is fair that Haze sacrificed 75% of her HP for offensive buffs, but this can easily be fixed with proper positioning. Anyway, back to Amiya. This skill is definitely the easiest skill to use because it has no drawbacks like her other skills, have low skill points requirement with decently long duration, and finally, her talent allows you to spam this skill. Simply, this is your best skill option if you are still an early player or if you don't like her other skills. If you are persistent of still wanting to use this skill in late game, I would highly recommend you to use a dedicated attack buffer with you. But personally, I don't recommend build this skill further as there are so many better options than this skill with Haze being one of them, although I still don't personally recommend you to build Haze over Click. Overall, despite its noticeable damage spike, this skill is not worth investing. Doctor, 
In many various guides you see from various sources, you will find that this girl has the issue of random targeting and has poor DPS because the attack is very low per bolt. While that has some value true to it, there are some things that might shock you. Despite having lower attack each bolt, the damage by itself is very impressive against single target enemies. The main flaw of this skill is that the skill is quite on the RNG side due to random hidden nature. Not only that, it also has self-stun, automatic activation, and finally the very high skill point cost. Thankfully, her talent makes up the high skill point cost giving Amiya free skill points when she hits or defeats an enemy, making this skill can easily be triggered as long as she is attacking enemies. But again, because this skill is unlocked when she is promoted at Elite 1, this makes the skill's potential lock until you promote her to Elite 2. This skill also stun Amiya which you might find in a lot of sources to be a glaring issue. While the stun can be troublesome, it is not a huge of an issue since most of the time you have melee operators helping you in holding the line and dealing damage to enemies. Another thing to note is that this skill is more of a single target skill despite it being able to target multiple enemies. Like I mentioned earlier, this skill has very impressive damage against single target enemies. It's so good in fact that you can actually use this skill as a boss killing skill. In this clip, you see Amiya is able to defeat Patria's second phase with this skill. Yes, it's actually that good. Although it does need some proper setups to make it work. Technically, it does work just as fine for AoE purposes, but personally this skill on its own doesn't really feel impressive as a source of AoE damage due to its reduced attacks. It almost felt like drone caster, but instead of locking one enemy, the drone randomizes the enemy it can hit. In my personal experience, this skill has great single target damage and above 2 enemies, this skill is very unreliable. If you're a new player, this skill can simply ruin your auto run farming. However, it is worth noting that this skill can ignore any taunt effect that your enemy has such as Guerrilla Defenders at Chapter 6. One thing that some people might not notice is that this skill can trigger Amya Salon. There are certain occasions but in my own experience testing her, she will deal few amounts of bolts, which in this case usually up to 1-3 to three bolts before she gets stunned and after the skill is over. These bolts can still trigger Amya Salon after the duration ends, allowing her to recover from 3 to about 30 if you're lucky. But realistically, you still recover some decent skill points, making her able to trigger this skill a bit early. There are a lot of considerations as to why a lot of people against building this skill due to a lot of drawbacks it gives and the obvious better options. But with a lot of practice, you can easily master this skill as Amya will bring a lot of damage to your enemies, especially if you're using this for single target. Also a good fun fact, this skill has deceivingly good mastery gain. If you with her mastery from a ship or game press, you will see she only gain 1 additional bolt and 15% damage increase from skill level 7 to mastery 3, which might doesn't sound that impressive in paper but in practice, the damage is very significant. You can see from this clip that Amya's damage to Skull Shatter from skill level 7 to mastery 3 is impressively significant. However, if you don't want to fully invest on Amya's second skill, you can just stop at mastery 1 as this level is a breaking point with the upgrade to fight 1 additional bolt when the skill is active. Anyway, because her bolt still decreases damage, you can always put buffers or the buffers to help her to deal more damage to your enemies. If you want to reduce Amiya's stun, you can always use Therapist Medics, preferably Lumen because you can instantly remove it when he heals Amiya, or Nian who can provide the resist buff. First off, I would like to emphasize that pure damage is the same type as true damage, but since Amiya skill refers it as pure damage, we will use that term here instead to avoid further confusion. Pure damage by itself is a different type of damage that ignores any sort of defensive abilities from your enemies such as defense, resistance, and even dodge. So far within the game, there is very little to no enemies that can counter or reduce pure damage. Well, that is if we don't count these enemies. Anyway, with how large the skill upgrades are, this skill easily makes up your hit hard to enemies, and more specifically, to enemy bosses lately as most of them have very high defensive stats. Even if they have shields, Amiya can still comfortably damage them by easily penetrating their shield without much hassle. However, once the duration ends, Amiya will be forced to retreat. There are a lot of considerations with this skill despite its significant skill upgrade, but one thing for sure is that this skill is way more niche than it sounds. The biggest drawback of this skill is that Amiya will be forced to retreat once the skill ends, and secondly, 
The skill have the normal enemy prioritization, which it will target enemies near the base first then targeting bosses. While fair enough that the skill does not necessarily mention it as boss killing, the skill by itself is not something you want to use for general use anyway because of the force retreat mechanic and her skill points requirement is massively high. But again, a lot of bosses at higher chapter usually come alone, so the skill by itself is still worth the consideration. I do want to address one thing about the skill, which is the force retreat mechanic. There are some pros and cons to the skill, being one of them is that you can position Amiya on a different spot, where for example she can be on a more comfortable spot from the boss to deal damage in a safer place. But at the same time, she has very high skill point cost and no initial skill points upon deployment. This mechanic can be a counter synergy and unlike Soda or other boss skills in general, this mechanic does not work well with Amiya because other boss skills have lower skill points requirement and have initial skill points to help them. Because of the high skill points requirement, she also have to face attacks from enemies which can be a problem if she is not supported. Moving on from that, the skill by itself has very high attack upgrade so in a lot of situations, Amya can deal damage to bosses on her own. But despite that, there will be situations where you will need a buffer to help you because of enemies with bulkier HP and you want to one cycle the boss. Operators that can increase damage dealt to enemies can also help defeat enemies faster. Any operators that can increase Amiya's attack speed are also preferable since this skill forces Amiya to retreat herself once the duration is over and you want to dish out as many damage as you can. Speaking of that, Silverash is also a great partner for Amiya. Not only he has explosive damage, but his talent allows all operators within the squad to get reduced deployment time, which benefits Amiya and Silverash himself. The reason I don't do damage comparison between skill level 7 to mastery 3 is because the numbers alone from the mastery gain is insanely high and can melt anyone within the range, even Mantragora herself. It's also worth noting that the experience between skill level 7 and mastery 3 is like night and day, so it's almost mandatory to have the skill at mastery 3 if you really want to use Amiya as your main boss killer. If you ever want to invest on Amiya's caster form skill, then this skill is the way to go. Now when it comes to Amiya, you will find people that will either say she is a good 5 star operator and one can also consider her as one of the worst, basically either you love her or hate her. As for me, I am in the good side of the spectrum. Amiya's second skill has great damage facing single target enemies and Amiya is also one of the easiest operator when it comes to pure damage source. You have her immediately, you can easily obtain her potentials as you progress and she is until this day the most low budget boss killer in the game being still very effective as you progress within the entire game. It is also worth noting that Amiya's mastery gains are massive on all of her skills as they massively increase her damage. She went from an okay caster to actually amazing. I oddly enough never use Amiya, but until I maximize her masteries, including her guard form, I actually use her very often, especially in integrated strategies. Even outside of that, I still use her as a reliable boss killer on her third skill and as a lane holder if I'm using her guard form with her first skill. All of her masteries significantly improve Amiya's performance, especially her third skill where the numbers alone are very massive from skill level 7 to mastery 3. Also for your information, I do have her at Mastery 15 and I say what I said very confidently. However, speaking as devil's advocate as well, there are some glaring issues with Inamiya. Her first skill while it's the easiest to work with is very weak as you progress within the game. Enemies as you go will become tankier and you typically have much better options to work with than the skill, which now comes with her second issue. Amiya's second skill can be very hard to use due to it activates automatically at random hitting nature. While it does attack 8 times at maximum, which is a lot of numbers per attack in the fall, she still suffers with reduced attacks each hit and doesn't do impressive damage to hordes of enemies if they're within Amiya's range. And finally, her boss killing skill. The force rigid mechanic can be an issue because you have to deploy her again and she will be one of your enemies priority due to the deployment rule. 
Of course, all this can be fixed with support helping Amiya, but there will be times where you can't do that because of deployment limit or squad limit, or you might want to use someone else instead. If you are a newbie, you will hear the most common advice to use Click over Amiya, which I can agree on this point because Click is way cheaper to invest and has very consistent damage. She also provides utility to damage your enemy until they're defeated or the skill duration is over, and occasionally stun them as well. She is so good in fact that you probably don't need Amiya unless you need a second caster. As for AoE, you might want to use Splash Caster or Chain Caster instead, but personally, I prefer Chain Caster over Splash Caster because Splash Caster usage drops significantly in late game while as Chain Casters have great utility, especially if you upgrade their module. Pudding who is a 4 star is cheap to invest and I highly recommend building her. But you do need to buy her in the shop and she can be quite expensive to raise since Chain Caster need their module to be good. And if you don't want that, then you can try get Kitano in Headhunting who is a 4 star splash caster, so she is much easier to get. These two does have expensive deployment costs, so keep that in mind. However, despite all of the alternatives when it comes to general use, one thing that I find that no one can replace Amiya except 6 star operators will be her third skill, where she is one of the most low budget boss killers in the game. She is so good in fact that she doesn't need anyone else to increase her damage further, most of the time that is. But even then, she still deals very significant amount of damage to bosses and you can just leave the rest of the remaining HP to your teammates. Another that I can think of would be Province as she has explosive damage from her talent and massive attack boost from her skill. However, she also can be difficult to work with sometimes and Province is a headhunting operator, so the chance you get her is pretty low if she is not a featured headhunting operator. At this point, it further supports the fact that Amiya is still the best most accessible boss killer in the game because you got her for free at the beginning of the game. While I'm talking what I just said earlier, behind the clips I showed you are my attempts of using Amiya to clip boss bosses that are available in the game right now. And as you can see from that, she still comfortably clear bosses or at least deal very significant amount of damage to them. Besides, Amiya is still a must early 2 operator in order for you to progress within chapter 8, so she should be promoted to early 2 regardless. But despite that, I have to very confidently say that Amiya is a very niche and late game operator as she progress. While you don't necessarily use her for her second skill because it is very difficult to use, her third skill is the real gem. You mostly want to use her for boss killing purposes, and not every single stage have bosses. With that being said, you will find her true value as a late game operator because of her easy first skill, but you will also find her true value as a late game boss killer because of her third skill. To wrap this showcase, I can't say I highly recommend building Amiya, but I can't really say you shouldn't build her either because you still need to upgrade her to early 2 in order for you to progress within the story. There are a lot of better options when it comes to consistent arch damage, but she is also one of the only options for boss killing if you don't have better 6 star options yet. If you do want to invest on her masteries, Amiya's third skill is definitely the gem. The attack upgrade is massive and she also reliably attack boss enemies as well. I can safely assure you, it is definitely worth the materials. You can also gain her guard form once you promote her to early 2, which if you like Amiya so much, her guard form is very versatile and also very strong for lane holding use. Each account needs to have at least one boss killer, so if you don't have one yet, then you might want to backtrack a bit and see the bunny. It is the year of the bunny after all, so make this little rose commander happy because she deserves it. First up, I'd like to say big thank you to all doctors who have been following me even after my hiatus, again. Last year was the worst year I ever had and this year I am hoping to be more consistent with things I do. I also took my college session more seriously now and this video is the result of my studies. I really can't thank everyone enough for keep cheering me on on discord and from this day on, I hope my videos will continue to be more informative spotlights to you all. After Amiya's card form, I will continue with Eben Halls so please be sure to keep in touch with that. Also, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like to help this channel get more noticed by the algorithm. If you don't want to miss out my videos, consider subscribing to my channel. If you want another operator to be hyper analyzed like this one or you might have some thoughts, then please be sure to let me know in the comments. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next appointment. This is Nicole signing out. Have a nice day and best of luck at hunting, doctor.